Hello everyone, this is In Game Arts. This is the last and fourth part to my Nintendo Switch game collection, which I have 160 plus games. Uh, this is the last uh, video for this collection. Uh, so it might be a little longer because we got a little bit more than 40 plus like we did in the other collections. And once this is over, we will pretty much, I don't know how quickly we're going to jump to maybe PS1 and then we might save PlayStation 5 to the last, uh, last video because that's the one I probably have the least amount of games for currently. But not to make this video any longer than it needs to be, I, like always, I, as I state multiple times, I am a weird person who likes weird games, and I have different tastes in games. We could all like and dislike different things and all still be friends and love gaming. And that's the great thing about gaming, is that we all can come together and have our own viewpoints and what we like to play. And I'm always encouraged to hear what other people like to play and enjoy. That's always great. I'm always happy to see it. And that's why I love video gaming, because there's so much variety on your shelf. And that's why I've been loving the Switch, and I've been my PlayStation 4 because they have some of the best collection of that I've ever seen in gaming. But not to make this too much longer, let's go ahead and neatly jump into it. We have Marvel Ultimate Alliance, The Black Order. Uh, I picked this up used. I have yet to play it. I have actually never played any of these games because this is the third one in the series. I never picked up the Xbox 360 or the PS3 three versions of these games. They're basically like a top-down hack and slash thing. Uh, uh, team based time style game. I haven't played it. I've heard mixed things about this game. But anyway, picked it up, got a used copy for it. Surprisingly, this is only available on a Switch. I would have really expected at least maybe eventually, like this was going to be a time exclusive and it would have popped up on PlayStation 4 or PS5 or Xbox One at some point. But maybe Nintendo will really worked out a deal so they can own this exclusively. Very interesting that of all things that ended up being exclusive for the Switch. Next up, we got Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I've yet to play it, surprisingly. I've heard this is a tactical-based style game, uh, which is weird because that's right up my alley. But again, it's just, it's Mario again, and I'm just, I'm not the biggest Mario fan. It's not Paper Mario, so it's like, eh, I'm not that interested in it. But anyway... I should really sit down and play it because I love the fact that it's like an XCOM style game. I heard the sequel is actually really good too, so I've been wanting to play that as well. But I've been holding off because I'm, I'm thinking that Ubisoft will re-release -re the second one on the Super Nintendo Switch or whatever the next Switch is going to be called. And it'll be basically be a complete edition on that version. So that's what I'm expecting. That's why I haven't picked up the second one yet. But anyway, really happy to have this. I nearly need to sit down and play it. Moving up. Now this wasn't a very good game. Shiren, the Wanderer, the Tower of the For the Tower of Fortune, and the Dice of Fate. I couldn't get into it. Uh, I just didn't. Something about it wasn't just wasn't really interesting. I tried messing with it multiple times. I just something about it just was not intriguing me at all. I don't know. I picked it up from Limited Run, but I was expecting that I would have enjoyed it, but surprisingly not. Moving on, we have Fear of Fence, Fear, Fairy Fencer F, Advent Dark Force. I don't know, it's one of those weird anime, kind of JRPG style games. Have no opinion, have yet to mess with it. I've heard mixed things about it. But, again, I pick up all these weird kind of Japanese kind of stuff. I, I, I pick up a lot of them, but I do uh, overlook a lot of them too. Because there's, there's many out there. Especially on if you're trying to collect them all on every platform. But anyway, happy to have it. Now, here's a very good game. Surprisingly really good. And that is Dusk. This is a boomer shooter style game. Uh, this is really, really good. It runs marvelously well on the Switch. I actually, they just recently made the PS4 version available. You could buy at the store, the actual store of the company. And I've been sitting here waiting. I've heard nothing about my PS4 version to come in yet. But I'm glad to have the Switch version. Amazingly good boomer shooter. Highly, highly recommend it. Lots of fun. It runs so well on the Switch. Highly, highly recommend it. It's definitely within my top 10 favorite Switch games I have on my shelf. Really good boomer shooter. Another one, fairly good, is Bad North, the Jotun, Jotun edition. This is an interesting strategy style game where you're trying to hold these Vikings or trying to attack your uh, like island and you got to prepare for it. It's randomly generated. Something, think, of, think of something like Slate Aspire where you're picking your path and you're trying to choose like when the path that may give you the most resources or the easiest path if you're you're wounded or something like that again it's very interesting i won't say it's my most favorite but i find the games very fascinating especially visually graphically next up is arms which is like a nintendo switch fighting game 
not bad. I honestly say this is not a bad physical copy. And this is a more updated version. This is 02. I think there is a bit of higher versions out there. Uh, it's 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 actually fairly good. It's decent. Like I said, I'm not a big fighting game person, so it's not the most for me. But anyway, I'm really happy to have it. It's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Again, it's very creative. And that's, again, if Nintendo puts the effort sometimes, they're very creative. But some reason, when they are creative, people don't like it. And so they got to be generic and uninspired. And I just, that's when I, they lose interest for me. And moving up, I talked about this before. As Divine Collection, now this is that Chemico co company I talked about with Limited Run, where Limited Run is releasing these games one at a time on PlayStation 4. But if you buy this collection, and this is legitimately from Limited Run, Limited Run released the Switch version, which comes with all four games on one cartridge, but on PlayStation on a 50 gigabyte disc, or 25 gigabyte, whatever, doesn't matter, they want to put one at a time. I just, <laughs> that's so infuriating. And I just, I picked this up because, like I said, I just stopped buying these for PlayStation 4 and I've been buying them for the Switch. So I had the Switch version here. I don't have too many of these collections from the Chemico for the Switch. I've been wanting to buy it, but again, maybe it was because when the Limit Run burned to me so much, I wasted so much money and time with the Limit Run versions that I just haven't invested to get the Switch versions. Here's a game I'm disappointed with is Dust of Dust and Azalin Tale. This is like a Metrovania, really good game. English voice actor. This is from Limited Run. Uh, what's disappointing is that Limited Run only released this on the Switch. It's on the PS4. You can get this game. It's not like a Switch exclusive. Why they only released this on the Switch is beyond me. But I'm really happy to at least have a physical copy of it. Really good game. Really sweet. I love this character. Her, her, I forget her name. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've played it. I just, I loved her character. I love the whole setup and everything. And it's just a very good game. Very, very good game on Metro, for a Metrovania. Now, here's two of these together. I bought both of them. There's Pokemon Shield and Pokemon Sword. The Pokemon Shield expansion with the Pokemon Sword expansion. This does come with all current release expansions for Shield and Sword on cartridge. I picked these up. I, dang, here you go. Yes, they are on cartridge. This code has, I think it's just more for outfits and stuff like that and gives you like 100 Pokeballs. But the actual expansion content is on the, cartri uh, on the cartridge, like the extra map and stuff like that. I have no opinion. I am not a Pokemon person. I have no love for Pokemon. I just <coughs> collected this for just collective purposes because I know the crazy Pokemon people are because uh, they got they, they suffer from Stockholm Syndrome but man, that's the only explanation for people's obsession with Pokemon. Now the only problem I have with Pokemon, don't get me wrong, I don't have this against Pokemon, is the people who love Pokemon. And not just because of that. The people who go around saying that turn-based games are a dead genre. That name, Final Fantasy VII can't be turn-based. It's an old dead genre. It makes no sense. Nobody just stands around and take damage. Name, but we'll have Persona. Everyone loves Persona. It's a turn-based game. You have all these people keep saying that turn-based games are a dead genre. But those exact same people will say, but I love Pokemon. Pokemon's a turn-based game. What are you talking about? They're a turn-based game. So, I'm... <laughs> the community sometimes really just grinds my gears but anyway i have it i have no love for it i just collected it for the collective purposes of it if you love pokemon as like i always say like of all my other videos that i've pissed off everyone who cares what i think as i've always said i am just a random loser on the internet who makes videos about offline gaming i have my own tastes and viewpoints and gamings i'm not gonna beat around the bush and lie to people about what i think Nane, I'm not a fan of Pokemon. I do think people will suffer from Stockholm Syndrome. People really need to look for help when it comes not just from Pokemon, but Nintendo. And not just Nintendo. Sony, Microsoft, Disney, Stockholm Syndrome. Don't be loyal to a company. Stockholm Syndrome. Get help. But anyway, I have them. I mean, it's Pokemon. <laughs> Let's move on. We got Pokemon Legend Arceus. I got this really, really cheap. Uh, I heard some really good things about it. I heard it's yeah, it's a used copy. Uh, this is a more updated version. That's why I bought it, wasn't it? Yeah, this is 03 on cartridge. That's why I bought it. Because I was like, oh, it's an updated version. And so I picked it up. I have no opinion of it. It's Pokemon. 
Stockholm Syndrome again. <laughs> I just have it just because I, whatever, Pokemon, Nintendo, whatever. Moving up. Now, these are huge regret buys. This is Pokemon Let's Go and Pokemon Pikachu or P Pokemon Indie. Uh, I picked these up really at full price. I have massive regret picking these up because I didn't realize. Wait, yeah. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot. I actually picked up Pokemon uh, Tournament DX. I don't know if you can see that. I picked this up used because uh, I was exp I was uh, having the physical copy of the cart. Because I usually don't buy loose cartridges, and I bought this used at my local game store and. Uh, I was expecting to have the case come in, but the person said he wasn't going to be able to ship it, and he just gave me my money back. So I wasn't able to get the case for it. So, But the reason I regret these, these do not work with your controller. You have to use the motion controls to play this. Man, oh man, that pissed me off when I discovered that. I am not using motion controls. If I can't play with a controller, I'm not playing your damn game. But anyway, I have them. Biggest regret of my Switch buying. That's a huge regret picking those up. Now, again, I, oh, I'm always so happy when I can get to finally talk about good games. Really, really good games that you guys should be playing and actually liking and praising and encouraging. And that is, boy oh boy, the Binding of Isaac Repentance. Again, I simply love this roguelike. I have it on PlayStation 4, I have the Japan version of that, and I have the Japan version of the Switch version. Surprisingly, I haven't bought it on PC yet. I've been wanting to, but I just haven't. But anyway, this is the most updated, complete version of Binding of Isaac on cartridge. There is no updates. Now, there is an American release of Binding of Isaac Repentance that does have a majority of the DLC, but it still has some updates you need to download. But if you buy the Japan version here, which supports full English, full English menus, full English voice acting, same thing with the, the PS4 version, there are no updates, and it's the most complete version, just like the PS4 version. This is this, and the PS4 version is the superior version at the time of this video of Binding of Isaac. I have dumped hundreds and hundreds of hours in this game i am super happy to have multiple physical copies and i have the board game card game of this collection as well simply love this game i constantly want to play another round of it the game is just packed with content it's just got good music good story good gameplay tons and tons of fun i simply love this game i could not be more happier to have this physical copy on my collection and to have a complete version move it up we got curse to golf this is a limit run physical copy it looked really really interesting i like the concept of it so i picked it up i haven't played it yet it looked interesting i think it's like a golf roguelite or something like that looks interesting so picked it up moving on another weird one is uh special reserve games i don't even know why i bought this from special reserve why did i buy this this may have been just a fomo buy maybe and anyway, I have no idea what this game's about or anything like that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I bought it. Moving up again. I'm always happy to talk about good games. Here we up. We got The Repentance. I picked this up first on the Switch. It is a roguelike survival horror game. Really, really good. It does work fairly good on the Switch. Really enjoyable. Now, Sony did buy the studio, Fire Sprite uh, Entertainment or Studio, and there is a PS4 version that is called the PlayStation 4 compatible version, which that is the more updated version of the game. You do not need PlayStation VR for the one that says compatible. That one does come with updates to remove the VR requirement. And there's a PS5 version as well. So I do have every single version of The Persistence. It's a very good survival roguelike horror game. I actually really, really like it. I highly recommend wherever you prefer to buy it. Again, it's a really good game, and more people need to play it. Another really good game is that is Vampirum, Vampirum the steampunk dungeon crawler. You don't get a lot of these like grid-based steam uh, ro uh, first-person dungeon crawlers where you move like in a grid system where you go like turn, turn, turn your body, turn, turn, turn your body, turn, turn, like that. You don't get a lot of games like that, especially on console. So I picked this one up immediately. It was only available in Power Region. Really, really good. I 100% complete the game. I don't think I played it on the highest difficulty, but I had a lot of fun with it. It's a very, very good game. I highly recommend it. Man, I love talking about good games. 
Moving up, we have Undertale. I have simply adore Undertale. I have collected multiple versions. I have it on my PS4. I have it on my Switch. I have it on my PC. And I've been wanting to pick it up. Uh, no, I actually have it on my PC. I've been I've been looking at the Xbox version, and I've been debating whether I want to buy it, even though I don't have an Xbox. That's how much I love Undertale. I have the figurines and stuff like that. I have shirts and stuff. I love Undertale. I play it once a year. Now, I usually pick up the, play the Switch version because it's a little bit more easier to pick up and play because my PS4 version is a big old thick box. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe instead of buying the Xbox version, I just rebuy the Undertale again, again on my PlayStation 4, but instead of buying the Collector's Edition, I'll buy it as a normal Standard Edition. Might actually do that. But um, I love Undertale, great music, great story, great gameplay, love it to death, I play it once a year, anytime I get a chance, and I love doing the voices. I love playing through the game and doing the voices of Papyrus. <laughs> great Papyrus! And then Sans, man. <laughs> I just love doing the characters' voices as I play. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I love, I, I, I could gush about Undertale multiple times. Moving up, we have Fire Emblem Warriors. Three help, uh, three hopes. I've yet to play it. I think this is like a hack and slash Dynasty Warrior style game. Yet to play it. Don't know. Uh, picked it up. I got it like really, really cheap. And the next one is one I got really, really cheap is Fire Emblem Warriors, the first one, which is again another Dynasty Warrior style hack and slash game. Um, not really up my alley. I it, it's okay. Uh, it's not really my taste. Moving on, we got Holy Potatoes. Con Con compilation, compilation. This comes with Holy Potatoes, a weapon shop. Holy Potatoes, we're in space, and Holy Potatoes, what the hell? It's got like three kind of genres or something like that. Games all in one. It's from Limited Run, so I just went ahead and picked it up. It seemed weird enough. Haven't really played with it. I just thought it looked funny and ridiculous, so I just added it to my collection. Moving on, we have a game I actually enjoyed playing with my nieces was Heave Ho, which is a special reserve game. Uh, it's basically like you kind of like work together to climb across the stuff and everything like that, and you're using your hands to like grab stuff, and you can like swing each other and stuff like that. It's very just chaotic and just weird game. I really liked it. I had a lot of fun with it playing with my nieces. Another one, uh, uh, two of them, uh, Blossom Tail. Uh, the Sleeping King and Blossom Tales 2. I've only played one of them, and that is the first one. Uh, it's okay. It definitely felt like a very indie game. It had some design problems and seizure warning because there was like a like a lot of light flashing lights in the first one, uh, as well as that there is some boss swinging difficulty. Like one minute the bosses are really easy, then really immediately the bosses are super difficult, and as well as that there's uh, enemy spamming where they spam just hordes and hordes of enemies at you and it gets a little repetitive it's it's okay it's just got some little indie uh missteps i haven't played the second one i have no opinion of it i just picked it up to add it to my collection hopefully they made they took some feedback to be able to improve the game and stuff like that so i'm looking forward to it i've been wanting to mess with it Next up, we have Hyrule Warriors, the Definitive Edition. This game is just packed with content. You could spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours if you wanted to do and unlock everything in this game. Not really for me. It's another Dynasty Warrior style game. I just have it just for my collection purposes. So, hey, got it. Next up, we have Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity. Another Dynasty Warrior style game. Don't have much of an opinion. Haven't really messed with it. I got it used. I got it used. Um... Uh, I don't remember, but um, I don't have much of an opinion. I heard it run runs pretty rough on the Switch, so we'll have to see about that when I come around. Or maybe it might run better on the new Nintendo Switch, so that'd be really cool and interesting to see if it at least gives it a steady 30 frames per second. But um, again, I'm happy to have it, and I just haven't played it. Move it up. We have three uh, Fire Emblem, three houses. Again, I haven't played it. It's a tactical based style game. Again, I've heard people say that uh, Triangle Strategy is just a better version of Fire Emblem in terms of gameplay. I don't really know. I don't have no judgment yet. I just, I didn't like Triangle Strategy. So it'd be very interesting to see if that's considered better. This, this has got to be hot garbage. But again, I don't know. I haven't even played it. I don't like judging stuff until I play it. Sometimes. Unless it's a game I can obviously tell, like Grand Theft Auto. I haven't played Grand Theft Auto 5. Is it 5 or 4? The new, the, not, uh, is it 5? Yeah, 5. I haven't played it, but come on. Do I really need to play Grand Theft Auto 5 to know that it's, I'm not going to enjoy Grand Theft Auto 5? <laughs> it's a huge open world game. I think we've established my stance on huge open world games. But Ian, picked it up. Been wanting to mess around with it. Just haven't got around to it. Alright. We're down to my last stack. Again, I 
always love when I can get or finally get a chance to talk about good games. And that is Alien Isolation, the collection. Alien Isolation is my most favorite survival horror game of all time. And so when you told me there's a Switch version, I don't care if this game runs like hot garbage <laughs> on my Switch. If it runs like 10 frames per second, I don't care. I am buying Alien Isolation again. I have it on my PS4, I have it on my PC, and I have it on my Switch. And I'll buy the PS5 version, and you better release a PS5 version with VR support. I'll buy a VR headset <laughs> just to play this game and VR. But anyway, I love it. It comes with apparently all the collections. This was so distributed by Limited Run, so really, really happy. Been wanting to play it. Again, I, I, I'm i sure it runs decently, but I don't have no high expectations from it. But Again, I wasn't going to pass it up. Alien Isolation, if you're a fan of survival horror, you need to play Alien Isolation. Great atmosphere, great gameplay, challenging, rewarding. I just simply love Alien Isolation. It's got some hiccups, I mean, it's got some I mean, oddities and certain design aspects, and I don't like the human enemy approach, but everything else, two thumbs up. One of my my very first uh, Switch game I ever bought, Lumens Remastered. This was a limited run physical copy. Uh, I played it with a little bit, little bit of it. It's like a Tetris style game. I don't have much of an opinion. It's got some interesting soundtrack. I got it to my collection. I it was like my first Switch game I ever bought. Uh, a mixed opinion is Luigi Mansion 3. Now this was my first a Luigi's Mansion game I've ever played. I've been hoping we'll see like a collection or, or like the GameCube version get a remake. I know the second one from the Nintendo DS is getting a release here soon. Uh, I'm, it's, it's okay. It's got its moments. It's, it's charming. It's delightful. It's got some good designs that I did like about it, but other ones that kind of was a little cumbersome and annoying. Graphically, a very gorgeous looking game, especially for the Switch. But in the end, I have it. I played it. I beat it. I 100% complete it, which was a little disappointing. There's like no real reward for 100% completing the game, which was a huge disappointment. But anyway, I'm happy to have it. Might run through this game again. I, don't know, I could see myself running through the game. It was a good game for what it was. Again, I appreciate it when Nintendo is creative at certain moments, and I do believe Luigi's Mansion is one of those interesting style games. Uh, again, I, I I don't really know why I bought this. Uh, Splatoon 2. I bought this like new. Now the only reason I bought it was because of that. It said 00002. I was like, oh, this is a more updated version of the game. Okay, that might pull him buy this new copy. Lo and behold, when I opened it up, the cartridge is 000. This is the base vanilla version of the game. That took me by surprise. This is the first time I ever seen a brand new copy have 0002 as a barcode in the back, but the cartridge is just a base vanilla version of the game. That took me by surprise. Maybe I just got bad luck, and this is like one of a billion that comes with that comes like that. But again, I haven't played it. I don't have any interest in it again. It's like an online game. I don't even know if there's a single player experience on this. I just I bought that for that one purpose. But going on, go back to good games is Final Fantasy IX. This is the Switch version. Very very good. This has improvements and uh, enhancements to the game, like speeds up battles and stuff like that. I love Final Fantasy IX. It's right up there with my most favorite Final Fantasy games, right next to Seven and Tactics. I love this game so much. Good music, good gameplay, good story. Uh, just keep in mind, this game has a speed up mode where you can make the game run at like two, two or three times faster than normal speed. Mostly you use that for combat. But when you're in the open world aspect and you're using two times speed, if you go in to get an enemy counter, there's a high chance the game will crash. Now, it's only in the open world segment. If you do it in inside buildings and stuff like that, I've never seen it crash once, but just keep that in mind. If you're in the outside world, do not turn on the two times or five times speed or whatever it is. You are, you're risking crashing your game. But anyway, I have it. I'm really, really happy. I just frustrated this is only available on the Switch. It's not on the PlayStation 4 for, again, for some reason. But moving on, we have another amazing collection is Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII Remastered Twin Pack. This comes with two games on one cartridge, Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII, nine, eight sorry. Uh, now, people keep in mind, this is the Asian import. There is a PAL version, and I've been told that the PAL version is more up to date for both games. So if you're going to look for the copy, get the PAL version, not the Asia version. These are two amazingly good games. Now, I say that, but I've never really sat down too much and played uh, Final Fantasy VIII. I've played with it a little bit. I just, I like Seven the most. Uh, there's certain elements. I love Nine's cutesy kind of 
feel good story up moment and i love seven because i i particularly like the little chibi characters running around in the open world aspect but rise again in the battles that are full-size characters i didn't really like nine or eight i keep saying say nine eight because it's all like these life-size characters and stuff like that i like the cutesiness where's the cutesiness i don't know i just felt like it lost a lot of its charm and uh eight but anyway have it and this is where they first introduced their first card game and then they kind of like expand upon it in several editions so okay i'm really really happy to have this collection again why it's not on playstation 4 i don't know uh another import is mario kart 8 deluxe this is the expansion pass uh, version now this comes with most of every up uh, expansion they released for mario kart other than the last one that one is a free download if you buy this edition um uh, so it comes with a lot of the expansions and tracks and stuff like that on cartridge. So this is a must pick up if you want the most complete version. Now we may get a, uh, another re-release on the next Switch. But I don't see that happening. Now we may get like Mario Kart Infinite. I don't think that's going to be Mario Kart 8. It's going to be its own thing. And they're just going to turn it more into, more heavily into a live service element. I just don't see them re-releasing this game again. Nintendo has never done that. Where they release multiple Mario Karts on one generation. Now granted I, I'm well aware this came out on the Wii U. But regardless they released it on the Switch. And have we gotten a new Mario Kart on the Switch? No. So they only release one Mario Kart generally for per generation. Even if it's a remaster, they'll still kept one cart to Mario Kart for per generation. So I don't think we're going to see a remaster of this on the next one. I do believe we're going to get a whole new one. It's just going to be part of Mario Kart Infinite, where it's just going to be more heavily in a live service and probably follow pretty much a lot of the elements of this. And they're just going to try to try to bring them all together into one Mario Kart. But anyway. Happy to have it. This is a must pick up. There is an American version that got sold at some uh, third party site called like Nintendo Soup or something like that. And they charge a, a premium price of like $80 for this. But anyway, there is an American version. It's all in English and everything like that. But it's the same thing. It's the same thing on cartridge. It's just because with all the car uh, racetracks other than the last, last expansion. Now this Japan version does support English. So you could look for the American one if you want to. I heard it's uh, legit and everything. But they might be charging outrageous prices at this point for it. So there's nothing wrong with the Japan version. So you might be able to get the Japan version for a lot less price and you get the exact same experience. Other thing you're going to get is that the car, the, the case is in English. That's the only difference you're going to have. Moving up, we have Rasputi, Rasputi, Merle Kingdom Chronicles. This comes like like uh, the, the second one and third one on one cartridge. Now, the reason I bought this on the Switch and not like on PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 is that, uh, let me see here. Uh, I have the collection here right here. This is one of my box games for the Switch. This is the only way you can get the first game on physical copy. The, they never released the first one on uh, PlayStation. So if you bought this one for PlayStation 5, there is no way to play the first one. So I was like, well... I might as well buy it for the Switch. That way I have one, two, and three in one collection. Now this is like a collection that they released that comes with like old game, PlayStation 2 games or PS1 games. They got like enhancements and stuff like that. Uh, I just have it. Man. I have I have every collection of this. So I guess I can just go ahead and bring it and show it to you guys. But yep, I have this. That's why I picked this up for the Switch. If I put this over here. I'm going to just keep this right here. Hopefully it's not going to be too obtrusive on the camera. But yeah, like I said, I picked up all of them. I have every deluxe edition there is. This comes with a Soul, no Soul no Nomad, Phantom Brave, um, Makai Kingdom, and whatever this ZHP Unlosing Dark Side or something like that. Again, these comes with old PlayStation 2 and like maybe some DS's or something like that games. Other games, enhancements, and they put in a collection. Now, how they run and how they perform, I don't know. As I said, this is currently the the, uh, the only way you can get all three games. And they're only available on the Switch. There is no PS4 or PS5 versions of these games. So, glad to have it. Moving up, we have another good good 3D platformer, and that is Super Lucky's Tale. A very good game. I have it on PlayStation 4. I don't know if there's any difference. I I can't remember if there was an update for the Switch version, but I do know there's no update on the PS4 version. So if there's an update for this, then the PS4 version is a superior version if you want a physical copy. But again, still an amazingly good game. I'm really happy. It's a really good 3D platformer. Highly recommend it if you love 3D platformers. 
moving up uh asia import is overdose needy girl this is like a psychological horror game where you get to play like a one of those um vtubers or something like that and you get to like do requests and stuff like that and some kind of weird stuff starts happening in the game think of something along the lines like a doki doki literature club or something like that from my understanding i haven't messed around with it looks really interesting it's highly it's overwhelmingly positive on steam and this is the only way you can get a physical copy is importing this Japan version, which does support English. It's got full English support, so happy to have it. Haven't yet to play it, been wanting to. Uh, surprisingly, I didn't get into this game. My friend Pedro, Blood, Bullet, and Bananas. Woo! Uh, this is the Special Reserve Games. There is a new physical copy. It might be a better version out there. I think they did like a mass production version, so this may be already a physical copy that's outdated. What a shocker, it's Special Reserve Games. They seem to have that happen a lot with their games. But I picked it up from Special Reserve. The controls didn't really stick with me. I didn't really like the controls of it. It seems interesting. It looks funny. It was really cool and everything like that. But the controls just didn't... I didn't like the controls of the game. But anyway, I happen to have it. <sighs> it's just it's so hard not to try to upset people. But, um... <sighs> Metroid Prime Remastered. This was the first time... I played Metroid Prime. I played it originally first on the GameCube. I didn't like it. I, I chalked it up to that I did not like the GameCube controller, which I still don't like the GameCube controller. I don't like the Nintendo 64 controller. I, st I don't know why it took this long for Nintendo to actually just release a, a good controller for until the Switch. But this was the first time I ever played it was Metroid Prime Remaster, and this is probably the worst Metroidvania I have ever personally have ever played now this is a first person mode metrovania so i don't know if that necessarily counts but it was bad like really bad uh the game was boring the traversal was a chore there's no fast travel in the game mechanically the game is confusing like trying to figure out where you need to go what you need to do at certain moments now i granted i get it this game is a classic and then you know the pub of the game like the back of your hand but that doesn't really count as a good game because because you know the game it's like me trying to get on somebody who doesn't like a game, like say Resident Evil 2. I've played that game a billion times. I know that game through and through, but some people might get stuck. It's not their fault. They didn't play a billion times like I did. So this was the first time I played it. I got so lost, so stuck, so confused. The map was atrocious. Now, credit, bosses were good. I did like the bosses. The bosses were the best part of this game. Uh, normal enemies were boring. Fighting normal enemies were boring. But rolling the ball, rolling around in the puzzles, that, really good. I really, really liked that. But other than that, this is probably the worst Metroidvania I have personally ever played. I have no love for this game. Uh, I don't want to play it again. This is one of my big regrets that I played on my Switch, because I definitely would have liked it played it on my Super Nintendo Switch, or Switch 2, if it's backwards compatible, because then I could just play it once, and I'll never play this game again. Very, very boring. Very, very uninspired. Very just dull and just... Oh my god, so many bad game designs that I cannot believe people even remotely call this one of the best games ever made. Again, Stockholm Syndrome. It, it's nothing, there's no shame admitting you have a problem. The Stockholm Syndrome is a very real thing, and there's nothing wrong to looking for professional help. Stockholm Syndrome can affect you in any type of way, from people, from fictional stuff, to everything like that. You feel trapped, you feel like you have to love it just because it's Nintendo. It, you have to love it because it's your childhood. That's Stockholm Syndrome. You feel like you're trapped, you have to do this. I mean, that, that's the only way you can survive. There's better games out there. This is, this is not a good game. Don't look at it. Stop looking at it. Don't look at it anymore. Stop. Don't look at it. Get help. It's not a good game. There's nothing wrong to admitting there's a problem with that game. But let's move on to a, maybe a little bit better one. And that is Metroid Dread. Actually, fairly good. Not as good as other Metroidvanias, but I did enjoy it way more than Metroid Prime. Uh, it does have some cool elements. Traverse is a little bit sure. Graphically, the game is impressive. I do like the attack droid things, even though they don't really do much with it. But overall, I did enjoy the game. It was fairly good. It was my first time ever sitting down and playing a Metroid game from beginning to end. I did play Super Metroid, and I did play the original Metroid. I, they were relatively good. It wasn't amazing. Uh, but in the end, I did play. It was my first time. It's all right. I mean, I do believe from Nintendo, this is pretty lazy in terms of be Nintendo. They should have a lot more bigger budget and a lot more investment to make the games bigger, richer, and more... How do you know, uh, user-friendly and stuff like that. A lot more options and settings and difficulties and stuff like that. When indie games can come out and have more features and content than Nintendo can produce, 
you know there's got to be a problem. You can't just praise it just because it's Nintendo. You have to acknowledge that there are indie games that are coming out that are developed by one person who has way more content <laughs> than a triple A AAA studio. C come on. But anyway, it's better than Metroid Prime. I'll give it that. And well, a very interesting one to end off with is Final Fantasy Collection, which comes with Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, all in one collection. Now, this was available as a Play Asia import. Uh, I haven't played it, but man, I am so mad at Square Inc. for this release. This was originally first released in the U.S. They were going to do like a limited print run in terms of on their Twitter account, and they let everyone know, hey, hurry up and pre-order to get your physical copy. They did a small run, like a dead of night in their Japan account and everyone rushed to get their orders. Now, I'm not on Twitter. I don't do social media stuff. I'm not on that stuff. I, that stuff's like toxic and just there's go outside. I mean, just breathe some fresh air. I mean, that's that's not the world. Twitter, Facebook, social media stuff is unhealthy. Just get off that stuff. But anyway, I don't do that stuff, so I was able to miss out on it. And I'm not sorry that I missed out. I'm just pissed off that <laughs> Square Enix did it like this. And they did a small print run. So PlayStation 4 version is probably the most sought-out version. It's like probably the most rarest game on PlayStation 4. And then they did a re Play Asia release. And they did a small, well, not small run, but they were going to release a PS4 version. And then they canceled that and they only released the Switch version. So this is the only way you can get this collection is the Play Asia version. But Ian, I'm so happy to have it on my shelf. So this is the last bit of my Switch games. I'm done. This is my last collection on my Switch games. So next up, we'll probably have PS1, PS5, or PS2. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm sure you're not a big fan and my opinions that is perfectly fine i'm always honest about my viewpoint i just want to be honest of what i feel like what these games are i'm still happy there's a physical copy i'm still glad that there are games that you love and i'm really happy for that they're not for me and i will be honest about why they're not for me and i will be honest about what i think of those games but those are my opinions who cares what i think so like always thank you so much for watching this this has been a lot of fun it's been cool to go through my collection so like always and i'll see you thanks for always watching and i'll see you guys in the next part of my next collection so like always, you guys are awesome, and I love the fact you get to sit here and watch me ramble about random nonsense. Again, thank you so much. Bye-bye!